All right. All right, Chris. So, you know, we've been talking a little bit, you know, before we uh, came on the air. So you had, you know, a, a post that you did on Facebook and regarding some things for about nationals. Um, what exactly led you to write that stuff? And if you want to expound on it, you know, here's your forum. So, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to want to start off immediately with this is not a dig on how nationals was ran. This is not a dig on the USBF. Um, it's not a dig on the participants that were there at nationals this year. Awesome bocce. Um, I, I, I watched all week. My wife watched all week. You know, the BBN did a great job covering bocce grows a little bit, but I've played sports my whole life and been in a lot of competitions. As we talked a little bit earlier, I also was fortunate enough to be part of the U S world team for remote control car racing. I did that at a high level. I was sponsored. So I went to Italy. I went to Argentina and Thailand on the U S team. And to be able to do that, I had to qualify. I couldn't just show up at our national event for the government body that they have for RC car racing and participate. Mm -hmm. So what I had to do is I was from Northern Ohio originally. I had to go to a local race with, you know, there was two locals that I, you only get one shot at it too. That was the other thing. So even though there was one within an hour drive here and the other one was two hour drive, I went to a local race and they would take about the top 18 to 20 drivers. And then we'd go to regionals and then regionals would be like two or three States. Right. And the surrounding like tri states so it'd be like Ohio, Pennsylvania, and maybe Kentucky depends on, and sometimes States were cut in half. And those drivers were running at regionals and the 20 top finishing drivers there in their class would move on to nationals. So now the time you got the nationals, we had, because Canada was considered part of the U.S. for RC car racing. So we'd have everybody from Hawaii to Canada to California, Ohio, Kentucky, all at national. So you'd have 180, 200 drivers. And out of those drivers, 18 would automatically make the U.S. team and be able to go compete in, in these world events. Um, I, if, I don't want to take any of the specialness away from nationals, but I, I I brought this up at the Ambassadors Cup. I was fortunate enough to be asked to be part of that in New York a few years ago of why we don't have to qualify to take part in nationals. There's a lot of bocce players. There's a lot of great bocce players. There's a lot of bocce players that play only open. Mm -hmm. uh, they play their, a different style of game in different regions of the United States. But in the same token, there's phenomenal skill everywhere. So I don't think that PRB or open, I don't think there's one – style of bocce that has better skill right there's great players that play both games mm -hmm. or e even another variation of the game i understand prb 100 is what needs to be played at nationals because if it's a qualifying year which this year wasn't that's what you're going to play when you go to whatever world event or pan american game you're going to play a prb so sure you got to get your team ready to do that but i don't I don't like the fact that I want to earn my spot. I, d I don't want to, and I, I made a joke and it, it was probably in bad taste that, you know, somebody could literally walk off the street if there was a singles event and buy a USBF card and pay their entry and they could have rolled at nationals and never picked up a bocce ball in their life. So yeah, it's probably in bad taste. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But the scary fact is it's the truth. You can do that. Yeah. No, you, you, you're um, completely correct. Completely I mean, correct. I don't know any other event that you can do that as far as a sporting event. Now, I, I've, I've, I've gotten a lot of pushback. So Facebook, of course, there's a lot of keyboard pirates, right? Right. So there was a post, I think it was yesterday or something. It was directly relate, right at me. It was 100% like shooting at me. Like, so I guess if you don't have to qualify for the World Series of Poker, it's not the World Series of Poker. Well, poker is a card game. It's got very stringent rules, and Texas Hold'em is the only game they play at the World Series of Poker. Right, nothing and it's else. Played everywhere. Right, and you don't need to build a facility to play poker. Right, you just and need you don't to need to be. Yeah, 
and you don't need to you don't need to have a hand eye coordination skill to play poker or you don't need to have your body in tune or in shape or have the knowledge of a game to be able to make a very specific shot in poker. I mean, you're going to, you're going to read your opponent and you're going to play your cards. Right. So I, I found that kind of laughable. Uh, I'm not going to say who wrote it, but I, it was kind of ridiculous because it's not a sporting event. You know, it's just like we talked, I talked about on the post, nobody's going to walk into an arena during the NBA finals and say, Hey, I'm playing for the bulls tonight. I mean, it's not going to happen, you know, so, or, or any other major sport. Right. Right. So I, I, and I know it's an undergoing and I know it's difficult to try to bring all these styles together, but I don't think it's unattainable even a little bit. I mean, I have, I, I kind of outlined it real quick in my post is like, you can have local events and play any kind of bocce you want to play because that's what you're used to playing, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you know who's good in your area. And, but you know that if you're going to have a local event that qualifies you for a regional, if you decide to take the time and enter that event, knowing your, your big goal, your lofty goal is to make national, you know, you're going to play PRB. So you're going to research it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn that game, even though at your local event, you may not be playing that game. You may be playing an open with a couple extra rules to kind of move you in that direction of playing PRB. Right. But nobody's going to stop and say, they're going to show up in nationals and not, and you know, try to make it through this local to regional to national. They're not going to go through that ladder system without learning PRB. Right. Why would you? Yeah, exactly. Because your goal, because your goal at nationals would be to make the world's team if it's a qualifying year. Right. So you want to be the best you can be. And I think that in these local and regional areas, the cream will rise to the top. I mean, it happened this year in Mm -hmm. You had a player from Ohio, never played PRB, competed, um, did really well. Granted, they didn't look as strong as maybe they normally do because they had to alter their game some to to deal with the PRB rules. Mm -hmm. But they were impressive nonetheless. I mean, when you've got a large group of guys that, really practice for the, the hitting competitions. I'll use that as an example. And they use the mats and I, I've never shot a, on a mat before. I'd love to. I thought that was the greatest thing ever. I was like, that's perfect hitting competition. That's exactly it. I'm a hitter. Right. So I was like, that's awesome. I want to do that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to play PRV. I'm going to do all these other styles of Bocce, but I'm sitting there watching it. And you've got all these guys that I know that have really practiced it. And I was told that they practiced it, you know, and they play with the mats and they, and they really honed everything in and they were they were feeling like there's nobody that's going to touch us in this competition right so they take eight to the final round two of the eight have never shot a ball on those courts in their life that just shows you that even though those two players that only play open bocce never play prb never shot on a mat but they have a lot of skill. When right. you take them back into their 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 local bocce circuit, those guys are the guys. You know, they're they're great, and there's a lot more guys that are great. Mm-hmm. But you'd like to see this diverse group. You know, that's why I think if you could get a local event to go, and I kind of I kind of thought about it like this because there's, there's a lot of local players that wouldn't have the money to go to national. Right. I mean, I mean that's that's kind of where a lot of players kind of fall into that. I'd love to go. I just can't afford that. I can't, I can't afford to go. And I'm only, I'm just going to talk about right now, just Southern California. The nationals has really, at least as long as I've been playing, never has been to Southern California. So you have a lot of people like you're, like you're saying is we can't afford, we can't afford to take off of work. We can't afford to get a hotel room. We can't afford the flight X, Y, and Z. How do we, how do we address that? So this this is an idea that popped into my head after thinking about it for a while. So your local event. So let's say you have your local event, and I'm going to use one one uh, one PRV event or one nationals event, and it just kind of outline it, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say you got 30 guys from your local club want to try to make the regional group 
for California, is wherever the regional may be. Maybe it might be somewhere else. But so you got your 30 guys from your local club. Could you afford a $25 entry fee into the local tournament? Right? Yeah. So you take that $25 and your 30 guys battle it out. And six guys from your club get to go to regionals. Now, I would think that if regionals was like four hours or five hours away, you wouldn't have an issue making it to regionals and not pay an entry fee, right? You go there. But that money, because if you had 20 players, this is just 20 players, at $25, that's 500 bucks that came out of your small local event that got put into the regional pot mm-hmm. for, for men's singles, okay? So let's say your regional event is pulling in from four local events. So that means there's two grand sitting in the pot for your regional area for four players to come out. So that's $500 per player to help with their expenses of going to Nats. Mm-hmm. Would that would that be an incentive? Would that make things easier? Oh yeah. I mean that that pays your that pays your entry fee for sure, and probably your hotel. Right. For men singles, so if, you know you could qualify for multiple events, but you'd have to go to different. You're going to have to hold different events to for each. You know, men singles, mixed doubles, women's doubles, men's doubles, open. You're going to have this, and that's a lot of bocce. Don't get me wrong. That's where the complexity comes in. Right. And that's where the, do I want to, do I want to peel back that onion? Does anybody want to put that work in? And that's, I think that's what's holding people back. Right. So if, if that would be attainable, would it be the USBF that runs all this and gets everything kind of squared away or it would be there? excuse me, would there be a completely separate entity to oversee all the regionals across the country? I mean, I would, I would lean on the USBF first, but the USBF would have to grow. Mm-hmm. So you, well, you well, I'm going to use, I'm going to use Ohio as an example. Okay. Okay. So you've got, you've got USBF board members spread out. They're already spread out, but you're going to have to have smaller fractions of that. Right. So you're going to have to have a local director of for the USBF who's going to coordinate these small local tournaments in your area. So you're going to have to have these small USBF representatives in these local areas that are willing to run that event, right? Then once you get to regionals, you're going to have those, those say there's four local groups coming in. So those four like little local USBF representatives will run the regional event, the four of them as a collective. Okay. And then once it gets to national, the USBF already runs the national. Right, right. So you're going to have to spider out a little bit. You're going to have to get some people willing to put in work for the USBF. But I think if you ask from somebody from Youngstown, Ohio, we want Youngstown's got MVR. They, they just built a new facility. They added courts. They got six courts now. That could be a regional area. Wycliffe could be a regional area. There's another place in Cleveland called Neo with six courts. It could be a regional area. You, you're going to get enough people that will say, yes, I'll take on this small part of it. If you get enough people to say, I'll take on this part, their help will help the USBF move on their own, right? Okay. So you're not asking the USBF, so you gotta you got to send somebody from California to Cleveland, Ohio to run a local or regional event. That's never going to happen. No, so, never. but but it's possible if you can entice a ladder format, like I've talked about going from local to regional to Nats, you can get enough people to say, yeah, that's a good idea. Plus, now from my little little area in Pennsylvania, Cascade Park, they got a big bocce community there, but and it's right outside of Youngstown, Ohio. But even though it's in Pennsylvania, so they're they have a couple guys that make the regional in Youngstown, and now they got a shot to, to advance into regionals and advance out of regionals and to nationals. So now you got this small little community in Pennsylvania that's rooting for somebody playing at nationals on, on the bocce bros or the BBN. You got, you got a dog in the fight, right? right. And it's not a dig on Highwood. And I, and I said this, and it's going to come across bad, and I'm sure I'm going to get hammered for this, but when I first turned on the BBN and I was watching women's doubles, Okay. I looked out over the courts 
and I only saw like two teams that didn't have a Highwood shirt on it. All I saw was red in the center and black on top and bottom. So I was, I was just watching Highwood players, and I got a lot of Highwood player friends. We talked about them, you know, like Vanessa and Courtney, congratulations. You guys all played awesome in Milan. A lot of really cool people there. Don't get me wrong, but they're not from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. I mean, I want to root for them because I like them, but they're not, they're, they're not my dog, right? So if you could get, you know, little Billy that makes nationals and he's out there playing signals against some guy from California, now you got somebody to root for. You get something excited about it, right? Right. And and you played in the local event that paid to help get little Billy to nationals. So now you're really like, you know, I'm part of this kid being here and he's doing awesome. And he's playing a guy that's 20 years older than him. And he's played PRV for the rest of his life. And the game's tied. Right. How exciting would that be? I mean, right. that's, you get put a dog in the fight. That's what I like about this. Um, but it's going to take work. Well, and it's, I, it's I think it's take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work because you have to kind of change your mindset. Right. And I understand completely because I know a lot of the older USBF members. I've talked to Frank. I've talked to Guy. I've talked to Peter Rubito, um, you know, Joe Fortone. All these guys have been, you know, they're the mainstays, right? They've been around forever with the USBF. And and I understand why originally that they made nationals, you could just go, right? Because there wasn't this big bocce nucleus. Mm-hmm. Bocce was kind of in one area and there wasn't a lot of players. So they, they had to pull from everybody and they wanted to just make everybody could come, right? But it's not like that anymore. We We talked about before we got on, there's a major tournament in Cleveland, the Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce in Wycliffe, Ohio, 100 teams in in the open division, right? And then another like 18, 16 teams in the girls division. They opened signups up yesterday. And these, these are four-person teams, by the way. So mm-hmm. it's not like a, a singles or a doubles. It's four-person teams, guys and girls. Within six and a half minutes, the tournament sold out. Wow. There was, people, there was a waiting list. Seven minutes in, there was 13 people on a waiting list. That's how quickly it jumped up. So, yeah, bocce is growing. It might not be growing. PVR might not be. PRV might not be growing. Right. But Open's growing. But I still think that you can you can funnel people down that path of learning to play PRV. So, locally, we don't have the money to, to go out and buy 90-foot cords and synthetics and everything like that. Right. But... And I and that was another thing that came back to me was, well, you can't qualify unless you're playing on a PRV court. Well, wh- what courts did everybody that played this year qualify on? Yeah, because there was no did they all play on PRV courts. Yeah, there's no qualification, so that kind of wipes that out, right? But I was talking to some some of the Ohio guys that never played PRV, and what they did, and you know, I'm looking at it, and it, it seems silly. We have, you know, 60-foot courts is, is accepted, but that's not a PRV court, right? Right. But you could work backwards and put the lines on the court, and you could play PRV in one direction. Granted, now you got to throw the balls back all the way down there, but you can still play PRV. You can play a full game of PRV. You're just only going to go one direction. So there's ways for these players to learn the system, right? And I don't think anybody would, even at the local level, that thought they had a chance to make regionals, would not study PRV. I mean, they're going to go back and watch national. They're going to go get a book. They're going to go print the court dimensions on, online like I did, and they're going to learn the ABCD lines and the double E, and they're going to learn primary and secondary fouls. They're going to read these rules right. because their dream, their lofty dream is to make national. And then the pie in the sky dream is to be on the world's team. So no athlete of any skill is going to just go in there and not care about learning the game. Cause they're going to, if they're, if they got the drive, they got the heart and they got the skill, they're going to move themselves towards playing this game that could possibly get them to Uruguay or Italy or France or wherever the worlds are held or the Pan Americans are held. So they're, everybody wants to achieve greatness. I don't think there's anybody that plays the game of bocce besides you know, just your rec players that just pick it up because their wife said to do it. But anybody that wants to play it at a high level, you want to win. Right. You want to be the best. Right. You want to beat the best. And you want to move forward with it. So why would you ever limit yourself? 
I, I mean, I'm a hitter, right? But I played in the singles tournament a couple months ago, and out of 60-some players, I came in seven. So I played all four balls, which means I wasn't hit with every ball. Right. Probably majority of the time, I'm I'm lagging or pointing. Mm-hmm. So then people even commented, and they're like, well, we didn't know you could point that good. Well, I never get to, I never get to point. You know, 80% of the time, I got one ball in a four-person tournament. I'm hitting. I'm, I'm the guy that's going to step up and hit. So we have this other skill, and I don't I, – I, I don't think that people realize it, you know, it's just like calling Northern bocce or, or certain part types of open bocce slop. Uh, right. I would never call PRB slop because it's not, it's the most, the most precision form of this game. But like I said to you a couple of times, and I think you liked it, it's big ball, little ball, right? Open bocce is, you know, back wall, live bocce, PRB, all of it, big ball, little ball. Right. That's what it boils down to. You're using the um, same equipment. It, exactly. And you're using the same skill set. Oh, yeah. You may refine the skill set, and you may have actually, in, in my opinion, on some things with PRB, handcuffed the talent. You're actually tying some guys' hands behind their back by making sure they get over the D-line. But they can adapt to it, mm-hmm. and it's okay to, that that game is played that way. you got to get the Roth over the D-line. Great. Right. Now, and we're going to learn that. Right. Now, just with that being said, we were talking before and you were telling me about a few of the guys from, you know, the, uh, in, in Ohio, they adapted and what, what, what came with that, with them adapting at this? Cause this is what their first time. And at the, to my knowledge, the Anthony Capagreco has never been to, uh, to nationals ever. Okay. And I know Dante and I know Anthony Cugini are good buddies of mine. I know James Savaggio. Okay. And Danny Cotullo. Okay. Uh, none of those guys have ever been to Nationals. They all played PRV. And, you know, you could see at the beginning that Capo Greco is arguably in the, in the Northern Circuit, one of the best hitters out there. Okay. You know, he's kid's awesome. His bocce town is amazing. A uh, couple of uh, missed a few balls here in the first game until he found the adjustment. And then, then it was like he was back home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, he, the hitting competition is PRV rules. Got to get over the line, right? right you got to right. you got to raw for the correct way. And that's your bronze medalist that's never right. played PRV. So what's that tell you? Like I said, the cream is going to rise to the top. Right. The skill it just has to be fine tuned to something completely different. But you still got that skill set. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's no different than someone who's really good at baseball, right? And they're not left-handed, right? Mm-hmm. They're playing second base. Okay. But your first baseman gets injured. You got a sec- another second baseman, but you're going to ask a righty who's a really good baseball player to go over and play first base. It's a whole different thing than second base, but that kid's still a great baseball player. He's going to figure it out, or she. going to figure it it's out. An adjust- it's an adjustment. Yeah, and that's all it is. It's a tweak of the same game, in in my opinion. So... I don't, that's why when, you know, I am part of the Northern circuit, even though I'm in Kentucky is to hear that, you know, back wall live is, is flop. Yeah. There's some luck and there's some goofy shots that happen here and there, but there's also about 12 to 15 special technique shots mm-hmm. that involve the back flap that I think some of your standard PRV player would have no clue that that exists. Okay. There's certain spins to put on the ball. There's a down and back shot. There's, hitting the back flap at the bottom versus hitting it at the top and actually having to hop the ball into the back flap to make it come off or come off less coming in behind the ball, kicking the ball out. I, mean, I could go on. I'm not, I mean, but I'm not, I'm not going to, because I, I know that it's looked down on. Right. Mm-hmm. But we've made friends with some of these. Um, they're more into the finesse part of the game. Right. Right. Um, they may lean more towards the PRV mindset, which okay. that drives me nuts too. There shouldn't be a open or PRV mindset. Okay. Bocce, I respect both games completely. I mean, I watched players do things and I was just like, you know, Brad Thayer, he's been playing, he plays, he plays everything, right? But Brad's played in every kind of bocce event and there's ones he likes better than others, but you know, the guy's license plate says Volo Man. Okay. So, 
and I watched him bowl, and he's amazing. He's an older guy, gentleman. He's been to multiple Nats. He plays in multiple open tournaments. I've seen him at the Cleveland Challenge playing back ball live. Never heard him complain about any of it. He just wants to play the game, right? Right. So I, 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 I've I, seen we've made friends or, or there, people get enticed to, like, maybe come up to the Cleveland Challenge, right, back ball live. And – or to Neo for like a four person co ed tournament, and it's back wall live, and they step into our range, they struggle, you know, it, because it, they never played that game. I mean, they never thought of playing that game. So there's a different mindset. So the open players from Northern Ohio and Kentucky and New York and stuff, we, we respect, we, we're tight knit, right? We'll say we don't like that, but we do. We're we're still watching your Nats. Mm-hmm. We're glued to it. I'll bet you half of the BBN viewers were from the Northern Circuit. Because when I'm typing on there and I'm making comments, it's the same guys commenting on the Bocce Bro Open tournaments in Cleveland. Okay. So these are all people I know, right? So we're watching your Nats. We love it. We're like, this is awesome. This is a great shot. That guy made, you know, amazing roll down the wall without touching the sidewall and still coming in around behind the ball or a beautiful ball off. We respect that game. And and you can ask player after player that only plays back while live. We respect the other game 100%. We want it. We want to learn it. We don't have the money all the time to build 90-foot courts right. and everybody playing PRV. And we talked a little bit about time-wise, the amount of leagues up in Cleveland and Youngstown, they never finish their league. It's, it, the game takes too long. Right. And and you need the manpower on the court need the manpower in the court you got to have a ref for every game it's just it's not the logistics aren't there right but it's not that you know these players said hey natson's in chicago we've met some really cool chicago people like anthony and dante Mm -hmm. alex guerrera and gara and uh andy zimmerman and all i've known those guys for years from playing in other tournaments and everything we've become friends we like those guys right so we're we're gonna go to nationals but I happened to, we were driving back from, this is a funny story. We're driving back from Cleveland, Ohio. My wife and I played in a two-person co-ed at, at Neo Sports Plant. Yeah. I ran the tournament. We ended up winning it, which is crazy because we ran the tournament and we won it. It was like 25, 30 teams. So we're driving back, and I, the Bocce Bros are doing one of their podcasts. And I see that they're out at their Columbus Italian Club. And I'm like, we're 35 minutes from Columbus. I'm like, I've typed it into the GPS and we stopped there while they were doing the podcast. And what do I see? So we see Anthony uh, Cugini and Dante Lovell who are going to national the next week. It's a couple of days. They were leaving within you know four days. And then they got the rest of the bocce bros. They're out there and they've got different taped lines. They've taped out the PVR line. They're practicing. So don't, I, they want that game, right? They want to learn. They don't want to show up and not do well. So I think any of these players that would get involved in a ladder system, they're not going to disappoint you. You're not going to have a bunch of guys that have no idea what they're doing. And I think that's what the true PRV players are worried about. If we let a bunch of open players in, it's going to be chaos. They're not going to know what they're doing. I don't buy that. I mean, look, those guys, Anthony and Dante, were perfect representatives of the Northeast. They played an eloquent style of PRV bocce this, this past week. And I don't think anybody would say they did or thought that they were out of sorts or made nationals any worse or better than it could have been. Right. Maybe better. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me just ask you kind of this question then, because I know in nationals you have the PRV and you have the open. Um, mm-hmm. With what you're talking about, would you want qualifiers for PRV and open? Yes. I think you should qualify for every. So that's where the USBF is really going to have to get information out early. Like this year, we kept. I I wanted to go to Nats. It didn't work out for our work schedules and things like that. I really wanted to go, but I wanted to know what events were being played at this year's nationals. Like, did was my wife and my friend Mike Hilver's wife. We wanted to take them there, but we wanted to make sure there was a girls' event that they could maybe qualify for something. We didn't want to just show up without a chance. And this year wasn't a qualifying year, so it was irrelevant anyways. But so there's there was what? There was there was open B, which that's just kind of just a fun thing they do. Then there was women's doubles, mixed doubles, men's doubles, and open A. 
That's the, the four events that really happened, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have to qualify for each one of those events. Okay. But you could qualify for more than one. So let's say there was singles, men's doubles, and uh, mixed doubles and open A. You could you could put yourself into local events and try to qualify for multiple events. Why not? Right. That that's not a problem. But you, but I think we would see you may not see these same people qualifying for every event because they might not have be hot with their doubles partner, right, or their mixed doubles partner. So they get a chance, and then you're going to start to see this diverse group playing in each event. You're not seeing the same person playing every single event in Nashville because they signed up for all four. Right. So I, I like the idea of being able to see a, a, a bigger group of people, different people playing the game. Now, now with, with that thought in mind, do you, do you want to propose something to, I mean, the national guys for the, uh, of the USBF in regards to trying to change it up a little bit? I mean, probably what you're saying is going to be a bit of an undertaking for all the different regions. So it might not that's a five year That's a five-year plan. I mean, to get those local representatives in all the pockets of bocce, whether it's Backwall Live, Backwall Dead, Open, PRB, there's some parts of Florida that are playing Patong. So, I mean, mean, that's that alone, putting those chess pieces in play, that's a five-year plan. Okay. But But it's it's doable. It's doable. I, I think so. And I think, I mean, would, like you said, it would also kind of increase the competition within the local the local regions to get to you know the other point. Um, it's yes. I, I think I think it's a great idea. It it makes more competition. It makes for more camaraderie, more community, um, and then it actually puts the name national for a reason. Correct. And, you know, and there's, there was a couple of people who made the comment that, and, and I don't necessarily agree with this comment because it's still nationals. It's still a high level of competition, but they said nationals wasn't nationals. And this is not me saying this. They, they said nationals was a tournament in Chicago. Okay. Um, I, I can see part of their point, but at the same token, it's still national. They're still playing PRV. They're still playing by the rules are still doing what's required of them at nationals right so the medal winners they won nationals you can't deny that your gold medalist miles is your national champion in shooting courtney strickland is your national champion in women's shooting and no one should ever try to take that away from her and I, right. I don't want to ever i don't want it to come across that that's what i'm doing i'm not doing that either Right. I, don't think, I, don't, I really don't think anybody is. It's just you're bringing up a, something that we could change for the betterment of the game. Yeah, I and I, I think if people were willing to take on this undertaking, and I'd be happy to write up a detailed of, you know, trying to break up the geographical reasons, where the local one, what that's going to take is that's going to take a ton of research, right? So you're going to have to find out where everybody has bocce league. You're going to have to look at what amount of courts they have, what size courts they have, and how many players they have playing in their leagues. Then you're going to have to figure out, okay, out of this local area, what geographic area does that cover to go to this venue that has four courts? Mm -hmm. And how many people can come out of that venue, that regional or local venue, to play regional? Yeah, the the moving pieces, there's a ton of them. And the Bocce Bros kind of started doing it. They had kind of had this single thing going that they were going to get going, but it kind of fell by the wayside for a while. And COVID had a lot to do with that. Right. Um, but it's there. It's it's a possibility. It's just some open-minded things need to happen. The East Coast guys that I'm part of need to be like, yep, if we want to be on a world team, we got to play PRB at a high level. Mm-hmm. And we got to be willing to learn that game and respect that game. And I know that they do. I know they do. You, if you really sit down and talk to them, they absolutely do. Mm-hmm. They they respect it a ton. But the, the West Coast guys need to do the same thing with open. They need to embrace the talent pool that's over here on the East Coast. Right. Um, and I, I 
there's there's always been this east coast west coast like dividing rift right which is in my opinion silly that's why my team has you know I'd like to go play some more tournaments in California. They're a little far away, but we play in Vegas. We we go to Dallas. We're 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 playing. I know this the group of what I call the national players because they always seem to be a national. Mm-hmm. We're good friends with a lot of them. Right. We, we talk to them regularly, you know. So we 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 thought that whole division was stupid. So we're like, we'll go play. We'll go play their bocce, right. and we've enjoyed it, and we've and we've excelled. You know, we our first time in Vegas. So this is playing. And Vegas is tough because the courts are bad, right? So, but they're the same courts for everybody. So your talent level really starts to show through. Right. So, you know, our first year there, we didn't make the main draw, but we ended up coming in second in the, the silver, uh, the silver division. Uh-huh. And the second year there, we, we crapped the bed. We just, we had a bad run. The third year we go to Vegas, we're top qualifiers. And the t- and that was like the second year when they really upped the entry. And then this past year, we were we were fourth qu- or third or fourth qualifier. Mm-hmm. We hadn't lost going into it. We hadn't given up a lot of points. You guys actually knocked us down. We had a chance at first qualifier. But when we when we played Prosmo, that game went back and forth pretty good. Um, it was a fun game. It really was. Yeah. And we ended up fifth overall out of what do they have this year? 68 teams? 64 teams? Yeah. I can't remember. No, I th- for some reason, I don't know why I want, I want to say it was 80 teams there this year. It might have been more this year because they 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 jumped up the amount of courts. Right, right. But, I mean, so, and there was a lot of other East Coast open back wall live guys playing in mm-hmm. the tournament this year. It, it's grown. We, we kind of, our group has kind of pushed them like, hey, we can go do good here. You guys don't, don't work. I mean, we can do it, you know. Right. So when we're playing against straight laggers, right, you can see the difference in the bocce style. And that's – Vegas is like the best example of that. So you got you got this team that's just lagging, and they're lagging you into the ground. But then, the same, then you got like my team where Mike and I are sitting in the back. If you give Mike and I four balls to hit, we're going to fire cannons. Right. We're going to hit our own ball down. I mean, so you, you see this different mentality – and it, it's clashing, right? And but the games are fun. The games are awesome, and they're just as competitive if it was two lagging teams versus two full out brawl or hitting teams. So this this divide should go away, right? The the group saying one style of bocce is better than the other style of bocce that's garbage. It's bocce. All right, you're complete. If we want to move forward. We got to do that, right? Now, excuse my ignorance and kind of the regions and everything because I was while you were talking about you know the east coast and you know like the midwest and out west so southern california where i'm from you really don't play prv we just don't have that so and you just said something about the northeast they really don't play the prv and the midwest doesn't play so what what part of the country then plays the prv on a consistent basis and i like mean I, to me it's northern california i mean it, it seems like northern california is big into it i know there's i know there's i want to say it's connecticut or maryland has okay. like a, a prv league um and i want to say is it st louis sometimes may play some prv um i could be wrong i i, I don't know enough about who plays okay. it right yeah uh, outside of watching me me seeing it at national, so it's it's tough for me to say who's playing it. But oh, okay. Okay. What I do when I do see nationals when I when I see who was on the national team and who won a national, who's doing, I see the same group over and over again. Like and guys that I really like that I really respect their play. I'll give you an example: Paolo Pro, right? Oh, yeah, Paolo yeah. Pro, unreal player. He can play any game. It doesn't matter back ball live, back ball dead. Paolo's gonna do whatever. But he's always right there in the mix. Alan Knox, mm-hmm, right, an amazing pointer. He's he's going to be in the. But it's that that same group is always seems to be a national. And I don't think that they don't want new blood in there. I just think that that's just been the norm for so long. Everybody's like, well, it's just normal. We, why we, we don't need to change because it's just it's going fine. Right, right. But if we want to if we want to grow, it's not going fine. It's right. it's it's got to change. Um, and it, it's got to mean something 
to the whole United States for Nationals to be really, really special to send our best players to world. Right. I mean, that's why it's Nationals, to send right. the best to it. So, like, when you, when you look at Nationals, people who weren't there that we know are phenomenal bocce players, they weren't there because it wasn't qualifying year, so it didn't matter. So, mm-hmm. Jose wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Brian Wisniewski wasn't there. Pat Peasant wasn't there. You know, these are guys that have played on world's teams. Right. That are phenomenal. Bo- I mean, no one's going to argue the talent level of Jose Bota, right? But Jose crosses the line. That's what makes Jose great. That's He plays in open tournaments constantly. He's at the Cleveland, he'll be at the Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. He was at the Moli, Molazani Open Tournament. I mean, he c- comes over to the Northeast and he plays with the so-called bangers, right? The slot players. He's out here playing with us. He loves it. Where is, and, where is he originally from? Uh, he's originally from Argentina, but he lives up in uh, Michigan. Oh, okay. Near okay. Boston, the Boston. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, he's... But who, no one's going to argue his PRV talent, mm-hmm. right? I mean, the guy's... He's... I think the best the U.S. has to offer. Right, he's amazing. If you ever watched, if you ever get a chance to watch him play, you will just be in awe. I mean, he's 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 special, okay. very special. But those incentivizing those players to compete is important as well. So you know, I think I think Jose would may would maybe would have been more motivated to play in a non-qualifying year if he knew that he had a chance to play people from all over the United States and it was really special. I, I see what you're saying. You know, I, I could be I, I could be wrong, you know, but the best players want to play the best and they want to play they don't want to play the same person over and over again. You know? Right. I, so I, mean, I, I, I think we're I think we're at a at a at a point, especially I mean you're bringing up a lot of good points that I think we need to I don't want to say revisit it because we haven't visited it yet. Uh, I think we need to sit down as a bocce community from the West Coast to the East Coast to the Midwest and kind of, you know, kind of hash things out that maybe it is more equitable with some of your ideas. Um, I think if people are listening to this, they might, you know, the light bulb might go up on their head. And like you said, it's a, it might be five years out, but there's nothing wrong with starting that conversation now. Yeah, I mean, that five years is always going to be five years out until someone takes that first step, right? It's, right. it's, you can't, the ball doesn't roll until someone pushes it. Right. And you and, can take the best ideas in the world and then they're not going anywhere until someone hands it off. Right. And I, and I, and I'm just, you know, talking out loud here, but you seem very passionate about this idea. Um, why not? start talking to all the people, especially because the fact is you're that way, you're East and yep. you might have more of a, of an audience to kind of, you know, pose your ideas to, especially for the guys from back East who pretty much are the main, the main guys for the United States Bocce Federation. And mm-hmm. we could all sit down and kind of round table this and hopefully come up with some sort of solution that it makes it equitable. And it also makes it financially equitable for people to be able to go to nationals. Yeah. I, and I, I think that help is important. Like we, we talked about that before we got on to mm-hmm. is like, and I kind of touched on that, with you know, having the money available in that pot, once you make it out of regionals that came from your local area, but there's some players that you've never heard of and you've never seen them in a big tournament. You, you're not going to see them in Dallas because it, it costs a good amount of money to go to Dallas. You're not right. going to see them in Vegas, right? right. It, there's a lot of these players that are in this small little area. And there's a great example. I'll give you a great example. There's a there's a little town in Pennsylvania called Coppel, Coppel, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. The club there they have is called IMBS. They've got one court. And they hold a tournament, two tournaments every year. They do a two-person tournament and a four-person tournament. And there's some unbelievable talent in this little local community that doesn't even drive 35 minutes to Youngstown to play in tournaments because they may be 
steel workers or iron workers or just a local. And the only time they ever play is in this little copper tournament. Yeah. But you watch them play and you're just like, you got some of these guys that play in all the northern tournaments, right? And they come down and play in Koppel and they get, they get railed because these guys know that court, that one court inside now, right. and they can do some amazing things on that court. So to give that little guy a chance, right, to get him to something, even regionals, just that, just that one guy that's never played in even a, an East Coast Circuit t- tournament, now he's at the regional event. There, you start building a pride. When you start building pride, you start moving in a direction of passion. And those are the kind of things that I think is going to help Bocce grow as a whole in the United States. We got a major problem with we don't start playing early enough. Every other country that's like dominating the world, their their gym classes, they're rolling bocce balls. They're bowling. I've seen videos of third graders over in Italy and Argentina that are during their their PE classes, they're they're throwing bowls. Right. We're not doing that. We don't have we don't have any youth bocce. No. no. That's a problem. That's a big, big problem. Maybe a bigger problem than qualifying for nationals. Right. Because it it I don't want to say it, but it could be a dying sport if the youth doesn't come and kind of take the place of the people that are moving on. Right. I agree with you. I, I just I you know, I've got a I do have a lot of ideas, but you know, the idea guy is not, it's not the best person because you need a team behind you. That's willing to put some of these ideas in motion. Right. No, I'm, I'm bringing up points that other people have already brought up. Everything that I've talked about, or I wrote in that post, or we've talked about today, some of it's original because of my life experience with RC cars and stuff, but that those murmurs have been at all these tournaments I've been to. Why is this not happening? Why is that not happening? But I guess guys that are passionate like me that really love the sport. And I really want to see this diversity grow Mm -hmm. as far as like East coast, West coast, and just putting on this big thing is that I don't forget what the guy in the West coast said, or the guy in Vegas that I went to a tournament or the guy in Dallas. I remember what they said. And then I hear the guys at the local East coast circuit tournament, I hear them saying kind of the same thing. And I'm like, then why is there this divide? You guys want the same thing, but you have to be willing to maybe swallow a little pride and maybe get off that the PRV is a better game or the open is a better game. Swallow that pride and say, okay, let's, let's make the best bocce that the U S can make. Right. Yes. We know that when we go overseas, we're going to play PRV, but I don't think the best bocce comes from PRV. Not to say the talent at PRV is not the best, but I'm talking about if you really push both sides, the cream that rises to the top may be a PRV player or may be a back wall live open player that you never knew about. Right. When you look, when you finally see the best player that pops up, mm-hmm. so, but it's going to take swallowing a little pride. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I, I enjoyed the conversation that we had about this. I'm glad that you were given a forum to, you know, to talk about this. I think your ideas are great. I really do. Um, I appreciate that. This is really something that we as a bocce community really need to kind of talk about because we're only talking about this one tournament. That's it. The nationals. We're not talking about the other tournaments that get put in. We're not talking about Las Vegas. We're not talking about Dallas. We're not talking about, you know, the Cleveland cup. We're talking about the name nationals. I have, a bit of, you know, my own thoughts in regards to as long as I've been playing this, and I have not been playing this game as long as you have, but since I've been playing this game, the Nationals has never seemed to have been west of the Mississippi. So how do you call it Nationals if we're not coming out to California or yeah, it's, it's got to move. I mean, and they, and they talked about possibly next year's venue being Los Gatos, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but that's that's Northern California, so that's still not it's, close. It's, it, I mean, it's not close for us, but but it's California. It's it's a lot it's a lot closer than to get on a plane and go all the way to Highwood. Um, not that I didn't sure. want to go, but you know, it it's 
financially, um, time-wise. It's just one of those things that equitably, it should be in different regions of the country. And I do believe right. that will be here in California next year. Of course, Northern California, and that has to just do with courts. It has to do with um, facilities. Um, Southern California, we have we have a a problem that probably the rest of the country would love to have, and it's called great weather. So none of our facilities are inside. They're all right. outside. They're all in public parks. Um, a little difficult to put on a national tournament of that size in a public park. That's a logistic nightmare. Yeah, it, it, it really is. I mean, the only way we could kind of get away with it is if each of our local clubs in Southern California takes an event and puts it on there because we're all pretty close. Um, and you just go from venue to venue to venue. But once again, you're in a public park. Most of our courts don't have coverings. All of our right. courts don't have the fences. It's, you know, we're, we're spread out. The courts are, I mean, we, each court out here, I believe, is, is a, uh, a Punta Rafa Volo size court, at least in Southern California. But we don't have the fences between the courts. We don't have the covering. We don't have a building that people could go in and hang out. We don't have bleacher. I mean, we, we do not have what all the other courts that I've seen nationals play at. We just don't have it. And it right. would take an act of Congress for us to get it because we're dealing with city government. Yeah, that's it. I mean, a club is definitely the best place to have nationals because right. the club makes their own rules, right? So you're not, you're not dealing, wading through that local red tape. You know, it's there. It's the club. It's a beautiful facility. It's ready to go. Um, so yeah, that's that's that'd be a tough one to overcome. Yeah, for it's sure. a tough one to. But on the same token, too, like we've t spoke about here, is the fact that Northern California is fine with us down here because I mean, it's it's a lot closer. It's just it's hard to kind of swallow every single year. You know, it's either East Coast. This year was Midwest. That's tough for us out here. Um, oh, I get it. 100%. You know, so we need to make what we just spoke about, like with your ideas and other people's ideas in regards to the uh, qualifying, we, we need to address that. But we also need to address the fact that the Nationals needs to be a national tournament, meaning it needs to come to other places besides the one little yeah. back east. So No, I... I... 100% agree with that. I mean, you, you're, the NBA Finals is not in the same city every year. Right. No, exactly. And it, I mean, for a while it was. It was either in Los <laughs> Angeles or in Boston, but. You well, know. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm from Cleveland, so yeah. that's a horrible, horrible yeah. reference. Yeah. But, um, but you know what, Chris, uh, if, if you want to plug anything, because I know you guys got a tournament coming up there in, in Lexington, if you want to plug some stuff, you know, th feel free before we, uh, you know, we end this conversation. Um, uh, you know, yeah, we, we hold a, yeah, we hold a fun tournament in Lexington every year at a winery. Um, it's not a big tournament. It's, it's still good bocce. It's mm -hmm. at the vineyards. It's a lot of fun. It's an open tournament. Back ball, back ball will be live. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but uh you can find that on the bocce bro site it's it's in september i'm just looking at their thing right now it's because we had to move it this year up a week because of mbr um it's the 15th through the 16th but you know as far as you know go on the bocce bro site there's a lot of tournaments on there there may be something that you know catches catches you so i'm gonna plug something i'm gonna plug that i'm gonna plug the bbn i'm gonna plug your podcast it needs we don't have enough coverage. Right. And that, that, again, that's a, that's how we grow the sport. So if a bunch of your podcast members have a chance to go over and subscribe to the Bocce Bros or the BBN, the Bocce Broadcast Network that uh, Michael Scalone does mm -hmm. uh, from New York, which he's the one that covered nationals all week. Right. And as a matter of more, fact, he was, he was my first guest. For the first and yeah, I watched it. I, okay. I, I watched it. Yep. Yeah, good guys, good guys. Oh, the 
they're awesome. We, that's one of our favorite teams when we go to Vegas. Mikey and Zach and Lou, yeah. great guys. A yeah. lot of fun. Um, uh, looking forward at some point to playing some with them. Mike and I have talked to them about possibly doing a team for some, some tournament. But, but if you're going to plug anything, it's like, yeah, we fall in love with our local podcast, and we should. We should support the close one for sure. But the more your people go over to Bocce Bros and hit subscribe and like and do the same thing with the BBN. And then when the BBN sees these California people and they come over and they do, you know, your podcast, you guys get more. You get you get more views. You you pop up on YouTube quicker. You you get Google searches, things just open up for you. Mm-hmm. So if you really want to grow it, you gotta make it sure that we're forced into people's faces when we shouldn't be. You know, when you open up YouTube and even if you've never looked at Bocce before, all of a sudden the Bocce Bros get, you know, 10,000 likes or whatever, and they just have a random video pop up on the home screen on YouTube, somebody that may never have seen Bocce before gets a chance to watch it. Right. This can take all of us to do that. We, it's not a big group, right? It really There's, isn't. I don't know how many hundred Bocce players there are. I would say, I'd say it's less than 5,000 Bocce players in the United States. I, I could be way off on that number, but I've, I got to believe it. If you look at the U.S. population, there's probably less than 500 avid bocce players. Five thousand, yeah. I mean. And we seem to know, I, we need we seem to know all of them. Yeah, and that's that that shouldn't be the case. I know. <laughs> there, there should be, you know, you should show up at the tournament like, who's that, and wow, is he good right. or she's good? You know, right. I mean, that should happen. It doesn't happen. We already know who's good. Right. We show up and we're like. And that's the funny thing. We watch a live draw. We may not have any idea what team we're going to play. As soon as we see the live draw, we're like, oh, well, that's a tough game. Right. We do. We know everybody. Right. Exactly. That's, uh, it's, it's good in the in the term of it makes it fun and it's a bocce family and community. But it's bad in the term that we should start meeting some new people because there should be new people playing. Right. So if we know every tournament who we're playing and if that's a hard game or not. That's probably not the best thing. No, I, 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 I completely hear you. All right, Chris, we're going to kind of, uh, you know, wrap this up. Uh, I appreciate it. This was kind of one of those last minute things that we did. And I really do appreciate you coming on. And I really appreciate, uh, I mean, the battles that we've had, we've played each other twice and both of them have been battles. Um, I'm looking forward to battling again and it probably won't be till Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. 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 Well, we battled you guys in Dallas. We battled you guys in Vegas. So right. it's, 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 it's the rubber, it's the rubber match. It is the rubber match. You guys, you guys edged us out in, in Dallas in their game. And we, we edged you guys out in Vegas. Yes, so you, you had we're, a, we're on a rubber we, match. We I really appreciate you having me on and oh, anytime putting, I, putting up with all my crazy ideas. Oh, they're not, but they're not crazy. That's the thing. They're not crazy. It, it's, it's common sense. What you're talking about. It's just now it's a matter of, we need to put, something into place, a plan, an attack, the whole nine yards. So it can be, like you're saying, it's, it could be a lot more equitable, um, this national tournament. So, and, um, and I'll put this out there for what it's worth for my, for my last thing. If, if people want to move in this direction and they're looking for someone to help, I would be ecstatic to try to help organize this and work with the people who are like-minded that want to make this happen. Um, I will throw myself out there 100% to rally on this cause. Cool. It's, it, it's nice when somebody steps, he has ideas and then steps up to the plate and goes, and I'll take care of it too. Um, I applaud that. Um, so anyway, you have a good July 4th. Um, we'll be talking, Thank you. We'll, we'll keep in contact and definitely, uh, We'll be seeing you in Dallas. Absolutely. We'll be there. Okay, my friend. It was great talking to you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.